every day. You are quiet. I'm going to stay on that one. It's the, it is the main one. The others are actually connected to it. A man who prays sins less. You can't have an excellent spirit as a believer if you are not prayerful. Jesus said to his disciples to pray lest they fall into temptation. The less you pray, the more you fall into temptation. Look at your neighbor, tell them the less you pray, the more you fall into temptation. This is why Luke chapter, Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, Jesus spoke to them in a parable and say that men ought to pray always. Not sometimes, not when they have got problems. Men ought to pray always. What does that mean? Man needs to develop a spiritual discipline of prayer. Praying always, praying always with all prayer and supplication. Let me tell you, there is nothing that is spiritual that grows to a significant level without prayer. No church has ever grown significantly without much prayer. No believer will grow spiritually without much prayer. Prayer is mandatory for your success. James says you do not have because you don't ask. Prayerlessness makes you weak. I came to talk to JCC. I thought you were prayer warriors. Now you are quiet on me. I, I thought everybody would be excited because I'm talking about your line. And if you are not in this line, we're going to push you there. Because that's where, how many people want to succeed in life? Let me see by a wave of your hand. Oh, nobody here wants, wants to be a failure. I am going to keep, give, you, give you the way to get out of where you are to where you need to be. Because it is not your portion to be under. You shall be the head and not the tail. The word of God says, above only, two, two shall chase Two charge chase ten a thousand. Two shall chase ten thousand. One charge shall chase a thousand. Two shall chase ten thousand. How about a thousand? This is how we are going to turn the world upside down. What is this chasing? You chase by your altar. When you raise an altar of prayer, look at this man. He distinguished himself. And when he distinguished himself, he did what everyone else was not doing. There were believers who came from Israel and they were living in Babylon. And some of them were living like the Babylonians. Daniel distinguished himself. This country is said to be Christian. True or false? The percentage they give of the Christians in this country is alarming. If we were that many, 80%, where is the Christian influence? Where is 
the Christian character in the nation. How can that be? And we are rated also among the top most corrupt nations on earth. The two don't tarry. So who are the corrupt? The 20% and the 80% are wholly going to heaven. The truth of the matter is Kenya is a religious nation. We fall short of the spiritual standards of a Christian believer. We are fearful because we don't have faith. We are corrupt because we don't trust God and we don't care for one another. It's about me and myself and my little family. We are not living like a family. We, we are living for ourselves. Listen, Daniel was not a Babylonian, but Daniel took care of the affairs of the government of Babylon. He was not corrupt. These men who were in leadership with him, they overheard that the, the king wanted to make Daniel to be supreme over all the other governors and over all the other leaders. And they said, let's look for something to bring him down. They went through all what he had been assigned to do as a government official. They could not find an error. They checked everything. The man was upright. You know what that means? In scripture, it is called righteous. Everybody say righteous. Many of the Christians in this country are not righteous. Many of the churches in this country cannot even say that word. Live alone preaching it. They can't talk about righteous because the corrupt are sitting there every Sunday morning listening to their pastor preach and they are, and they are even coming to church to, to have connections on how they are going to continue to steal. We call it corruption. It is theft. It is stealing. This country has got professional thieves. And they are in church this morning. Oh my God. God help this preacher boy. Ah. Where are our Daniels? Where are our Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego? Men who are upright, who walk according to the law of God. When they checked every record and they could not find anything, they said we will not be able to accuse this man. The only area we can catch him in is concerning the law of his God. So they, they said, let us scheme something to catch him. They said, we are going, we know the secret of his success is prayer. So they said, he cannot survive without prayer. Tell your neighbor, if you are going up you cannot survive 
without prayer. It's impossible. So they knew 30 days are enough to finish Daniel. If he will stay 30 days without prayer, his power is gone. So they made a decree and they took it before the king and say to the king, we are asking the king that a decree be made that for 30 days no one will make petitions to any god or to any other person other than you or king. And King Dairas signed the decree. Verse 10, the Bible says, when Daniel knew that the decree had been signed. Oh, hallelujah. I, I feel an anointing, I tell you. When Daniel knew that his haters had accomplished their mission, the Bible says, he went to his house he went home. And he went to the upper room. Had you seen that before? Do you know that's where the church began? In a place that was called upper room. What do you think upper room is? It's a place of prayer. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, Upper room is a place of prayer. It is a spiritual maternity, no, labor word, labor word. It is a spiritual labor word. The church was not born out of organization having everything nice everything everything looking nice no that's not how the church was born the church was born in a spiritual maternity labor ward they, they were there every day praying 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 until the day of Pentecost came and found them praying, found them interceding, found them groaning in the presence of God. We must go back there. The church was born in power and because of the travailing that was going on, when it was birthed, it could not be stopped by the gates of hell. Herod and all the haters who hated the church could not stop the church. They tried persecution, it couldn't work. They tried killing, it couldn't work. They tried threats, it couldn't work. Why? Because a praying believer is a powerful man. And the devil hates you when you become a prayer man. Look at your neighbor, tell them, if you don't pray, you are a friend of the devil. He will never attack you. For what? He never bother with you. For what? Continue being a good Christian. Going to church on Sunday morning. Paying your tithe. Doing all what you do. The devil is not going to be bothered with you. But the moment you make up your mind. I am going up the ladder. I am going to connect with heaven. I am going to... To, be, to make Jesus my refuge, my strength, my hope, and I'm going to connect to him, the devil will hate you. And the devil will try, but he will be defeated. When Daniel knew that, he went home, opened the windows of his prayer room, facing Jerusalem and the Bible says 
he prayed as it was his custom. In this house, we have a custom. Look at your neighbor, tell them, here, if you are a member, we have a custom. The custom of David, of, of, of Daniel, was every day he prayed three times. He knelt down on the day when the enemy has already skimmed and finished everything. They said, whoever will do this will be cast into a den of lions. Daniel said, I don't fear lions. I have a lion in the inside of me. I have a lion in the inside of me. And I am not going to change my good custom because of little threats. He did not pray quietly. Daniel must have been a Pentecostal. Some of you, nobody knows you are praying, even when you pray. <laughs> Look at your neighbor, tell them you need to be a good Pentecostal. Good Pentecostals, they shout hallelujah, and we scare the devil. And when we begin to pray, we pray, we pray loudly, we bind things. We fight. And Daniel is having a good time in the presence of God, thanking God. He is not praying a prayer of somebody who is in danger. Stop those nonsense prayers of scared people. These are the prayers they were praying during COVID. Ay, 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 ay. Oh God, oh God, oh. Leave it. Leave it. You are a coward. Go put on your mask and get three chaps. Jesus. The man opens the windows and the Bible says in verse 11, because they were they knew his custom. They had done this to catch him. So they knew his hours of prayer. And they came in the first hour of his prayer. They found him praying. They said, let us go back. Let's wait. We know the other prayer, hour of prayer, what time it is. They came back and they found a man praying. The third time they came back and they found a man praying. They said, we got him. And they went to the king and they said, did you not sign a decree? He said, there is a man in your kingdom. This Daniel does not obey your laws. He does not stop making intercessions and supplications to his God. He has no respect To the decree you signed. The king was sorry because he loved Daniel. He realized that these men are wicked. They have tricked me. They have tricked me to put the men that I wanted to elevate to the top in trouble. Hear what the king, after the king trying every way to save Daniel. He couldn't. There are some things that people will do to try to save you. This is why you cannot depend on men. Who is higher than a king? Who is higher than a king? The king tried every way to save Daniel. But he couldn't. The men came to him in the evening. They said, oh king, remember that the thing you signed... It is the law of the Meds and the Persians. It cannot be altered. He said, bring Daniel. So they brought Daniel before the king. They said, the king said to Daniel, I love this. This is Darius, he's not a Christian. 
He's not a Jew. He said to Daniel, the God whom you serve continually will save you. He must have said some other things that are not written. He must have said, Daniel, I have tried everything to save you, but I can't. But the God whom you serve continually, the God whom you serve continually, the one that you were praying to, the one that you were not afraid to call upon his name, he will deliver you. Hear me. We serve a God who is more powerful than any earthly ruler. He is more powerful than any scheme that will ever be made by men. No weapon that will be formed. Weapons are going to be formed. That is what uh, Apostle Felix told us in the, in the previous service. There are weapons that are already formed. Look at your neighbor, tell them weapons have already been formed. You are haters. Those who don't love you, those who, who are not on your side, they are forming things against you. But whatever it is they are forming against you, it shall not prosper. It shall not prosper. Hear me, hear me and hear me well. It doesn't matter who is skimming your downfall. It doesn't matter what kind of weapons they are using. It doesn't matter how powerful they are. It doesn't matter. Their schemes will turn to nothing. So the long story short, they threw Daniel into the lion's den. An angel was there waiting for him. Shut the mouth of the lion. Say, he said to the lion, lions, hear this. The one who is coming is not your food. So when he gets here, behave. Keep your mouth shut. Food is coming. Food is coming. But this one, this one is no food. It's no food. Look at your neighbor. Tell them you are not food of lions. They may cast you into a den of lions. The lions will refuse to eat you. Oh my Jesus. They may, they may cast you into a place of danger. I say danger will refuse to attack you. You know, 2020, I was in a lockup in a lockdown in America. I had gone to America for two, two weeks. I ended up being there for six months. And that's where Corona was. Real. Real. The city where I was living, they had a big building. Actually, it would be almost as long as this, because this church, you know how long it is? 100 meters. It's like a football pitch. If you didn't know, I just told you. <laughs> Three stories. People were there full. Using machines to breathe. I said, my God, this is what you say in your word. A thousand may fall on my right hand side. Ten thousand may fall on the other side. It shall not draw nigh to my dwelling. I said, I will put no mask on. I said, I will not put on a mask. I am going to trust in the Lord my and I was walking everywhere. Esther is a witness. I called her when things, when things settled down a little bit and there were flights. Uh, she, I, I called her from another state. I said, come over. 
And I was there for all those six months. I never put on a mask. I was everywhere. And the one that watches over my life does not slumber. The one that watches over us is greater than any challenge that will ever come upon you. The problem we have is faithlessness and prayerlessness. Two things are a problem. The church is full of doubters and believing believers. They don't believe what the word of God says. They act like it is not true. And I was sending messages to you from, from there. I said, nobody under this grace will die of corona. I said, nobody, nobody. I said, we're not going to bury anybody. Because corona was a weapon. I was in prayer. The Lord told me, it's a weapon. Then I held on to Isaiah. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Nothing will prosper. That the enemy has schemed against you. Let me wind up. Jesus said, men ought to pray always and not lose heart you may have been praying and given up because you thought prayer does not work look at your neighbor tell them prayer works if it doesn't Daniel would have been eaten up by lions It works. When King Jehoshaphat was told about the big army and great kings that were coming against him, Jehoshaphat called prayer and fasting. In this house, from tomorrow, is prayer and fasting. Three days. Cindy Olkeshoni Nithad. Yes, you didn't hear the news, you have heard it from me. No breakfast, no lunch, you're not going to die. We don't pray, we don't fast to die, we fast to live. Amen. Well, this is, this is a contentious word now in Kenya. They want, they want us not to say fast. Can I talk to them? Can I talk to those media knights? Hear me, you media knights. We will pray and fast. The disciples of Jesus could not help a, a, an epileptic boy. They couldn't. There are so many people that are coming to church. We have no help. You know why? Because we are not praying and fasting. Faithfulness in in everything, a spirit of excellence, doing everything with the fear of God. And praying always with all prayer and supplication. James chapter 5, verse 13, he asks, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Let him pray. And verse 15 says, And the prayer of faith will heal the sick man. The Lord will raise him up. And if they have committed sin, it shall be forgiven them. There is nothing that can, can stop prayer. Nothing. 
And prayer and faith cannot be, they cannot be separated. They, they work together. We pray by faith. You cannot pray any other way. So if you don't have faith, you don't have prayer. If you don't have prayer, you don't have faith. Because faith is leaning on God. Prayer is dependency. It's telling God all your cares and anxieties. All what you worry about. Tell him and rest in faith. Tell him and rest in faith. Tell God what you want and rest in faith. Don't, don't tell God and begin to help him. If you don't have faith, you pray and you begin to help God. You have plan B. Say, if God does not do it, then I will do this. Do that. <laughs> do this one. Forget about the God helping. If God does not do it, he, he, then this one. Do this one. Do this one. You don't have, you, your prayer is offside already. Amen. Amen. How many people now know how to climb your ladder? There are witches and sorcerers. They serve a different altar. And there are apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. They serve a different altar. Which altar will you take your needs? I was given a very powerful testimony and I close with this one. <laughs> one sister, you saw the people I brought, I brought here last Sunday. They had come from our center in Tala. You saw them. She was an, she, she's a, one of them that was here was a lady that is very new in the church. And she decided, I will never miss morning glory. Where she lives, there, 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 there is no morning, there is no transport the time we pray. So she called a border border. How many of you know border borders? Uh -huh, okay. And made a deal with a border border that the border border guy will pick her every morning at 3.30 to take her to church for prayer. The border border guy said, 3.30? She said, yes. And you are going where? She said, to church. For what? For prayer. The border border guy said, I have got customers I pick the same time, but they don't go to church. I take them to the witch doctor's. They go there before they get into their business. I take them to go to their altar, to go and sacrifice. So the man did not believe. So the first day comes to pick her, picks her. They ride to the church. They get to the gate. The lady says, Drop me here, I have arrived. She walked and went into the church. <laughs> the man stood there for about 10 minutes to see whether she will come out. That she was just tricking. There is a witch doctor around there. <laughs> she didn't come out. So the second day, he came late to see whether it is real. 20 minutes late, the lady was walking out of her house. She had started walking to go to church. He stopped. She got on, and the man brought her to the church and said to her, Now, I believe that you come to church. She said, we have to make a different arrangement. 
because I have got other customers who I have been serving for a long time, I pick them at 3.30 and I don't want to bring you in church late. So I will be picking you first before I pick them to take them to the witch doctor. Look at your neighbor. Tell them, neighbor, life is not fair. It is for the fighters. Be a fighter and climb to your top. Make up your mind. Tell your neighbor, make up your mind. Whom will you serve? I'm making a declaration. We have entered into the second half of the year 2023. July is going to be It is going to be for you amen. a month. Listen first. Don't say amen for nothing. It is going to be a month for you to get established in prayer. So make up your mind that you are going to make the house of God your dwelling. You see that scripture? Hebrews 10, 25, say it. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. We are going to gather. Why is prayer the most, the least attended meeting in any church? Because the devil knows what will happen. He knows that he has lost you. He knows that you will be successful in whatever you do. And we are going to teach him a lesson. And we will, we will not be destroyed with the rest of the ignorant. God's people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Now you know. Now you know. Prayer is not just important. Prayer is mandatory. For a success of a believer, it's not just, it is not just important. Tell your neighbor, prayer is not just important. It is mandatory. I don't know how many times you're going to plan to pray. Maybe three times. Morning. You are in morning glory. Before the devils begin their operations. I didn't know that there are people who are so much committed to the devil that they have to take a sacrifice every morning to a witch doctor. While Christians are sleeping. They curse your business. They, where do you think they go to the witch doctor? To tell the witch doctor what they want the witch doctor to do. They say, curse that business for me. Here is a sacrifice. Curse that family. And you think the problems that are in your family are just problems? You say, oh, my wife is a devil. No. Your wife is not a devil. You didn't marry a devil because if it, it was a devil, you wouldn't have married her. My husband is, I don't know what. No, he is not. Ziglak uh -huh. is under attack. Uh -huh. Pray. Until the devil walks out. Don't say, oh, business is law. You are cursing. There are those who are going to make a sacrifice so that you continue with that foolishness of business is law. There is no money. While you are saying that there are some people who are making millions every day. Oh, the economy is bad. That is a language of everybody. Distinguish yourself. Come out of the class 
of those kind of people who talk, who talk according to what they hear and what they see. Begin to live by faith. Call those things that are not as though they are. Can I pray for you? Stand up on your feet. Kila siku, kila sa, umaminifu, wana. Lift your hands. Kila siku, kila sa, umaminifu. Everybody with their hands lifted up. Kill us, Baba. Kill us, It's time for God to show his faithfulness. If you are sick in your body, the prayer of faith will heal the sick. If you are bound, if you are bound by something, the prayer of faith will set you free. It doesn't matter where you are. God is able to lift you up. He is stronger than what is holding you down. And he is going to do it for you. How many of you believe in this good and faithful God? Yes, he is able to do more exceedingly, more abundantly, more than what we can think, more than what we can ask. And I want to pray for you, you who have been going through trouble. It is time for the enemy to put off his dirty hands. May the Lord get you out of that den of lions. May an angel be sent to deliver you. I say may the Lord send an angel. Those of you who are in trouble, you have been cast in a place so that you do not, you are not coming out. I am here to tell you the angel of the Lord has already been commissioned to come for your deliverance you will not die you will leave you will not be destroyed you will come out better lift up your hands and begin to pray right now begin to pray like you believe begin to pray like you believe I bring down every power. I destroy every stronghold of the enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, I blaga hisu kamaya takata. Oh, rabakato rabaya shukara rabaka shila balaba. If you are sick, touch where you are hurting right now. Maybe you have a cancer. Maybe you have high blood pressure. Maybe you have diabetes. It doesn't matter the report of the doctor. Whose report will you believe? The Lord report is that he is your healer. He will heal you. He will heal you. You may be, you may be barren. They may have called you a barren person. Anna by prayer got, got pregnant. And by prayer this morning, somebody is going to get their mira miracle child somebody is going to get their miracle child oh that business that has been attacked by demon spirits oh matakata baki araba karaba it will not go down it will not go down i release an anointing right now to break every yoke i release an anointing right now every curse be broken every pain die i come against diabetes put your hand there put your hand where you want god to touch you right now and receive your miracle i release an anointing to break yokes of bondage i release oh my god every breathing problem asthma asthma you are a devil i come against you right now you asthmatic spirit 
come out in the mighty name of Jesus. I come against arthritis in the mighty name of Jesus. I command every growth. I command every growth. I command every growth. Growths in the uterus. I command you to die, to disappear right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody is being healed of arthritis right now. Be healed. Be healed. That left, that that right leg that that right leg that has been attacked by arthritis it is so painful you can't even bend your knee right now begin to bend your knee in the whoever that person is you have been attacked by arthritis on your right leg i want you to move your leg i want you to move the knee was so painful i want you to move that leg in the mighty name of jesus somebody else back there has been healed of asthma receive your miracle you who are asthmatic in the mighty name of jesus i cancel the power of asthma in the name of jesus be healed be healed be healed be healed every pain leave every pain leave every pain leave in the mighty name of jesus receive your healing receive your miracle right now receive it from the lord in the mighty name of jesus oh my god i thank you i thank you miracles are happening all over check yourself check your yourself there there is somebody that couldn't breathe through your nostrils close your mouth and breathe because the Lord has healed you. The Lord has healed you. The Lord has healed you. Ah, yes, ah, Yes, sir. Now move your neck. I don't know what happened to your neck. You couldn't move it. It is. It was so painful. I see the Lord Jesus healing you. Be healed of that stiffness of your neck move it because the Lord has healed you so many miracles have taken place so many miracles have taken place there's a prayer request here Shalom Papa please pray for Gloria Gloria's Mwende she has delayed speech at age 10 she is not able to walk this is from the mother. Lord Jesus, thank you. <laughs> thank you. For you have already healed this child. I declare that this week, Glorious will begin to talk and will begin to walk and we will hear the testimony and you will see her next week here in the service mama glorious bring your daughter here like next sunday for the church to see the doings of the lord And I want to give God glory because I know so many people have been healed. If you had a condition, check yourself. And if you find that God has done it, let me see by a raise of your hand. You had a pain somewhere, the pain is gone. You had a growth somewhere, the growth is gone. Somebody back there, somebody else back there. 
Oh my God, I give you praise. Somebody else on that side is a young boy here. Oh, glory to God. All the way at the end on that side, somebody was waving their hand to me on that side. Miracles are popping up like popcorns. I wish I had a time for us to hear all these testimonies. But do me a favor. Take a piece of paper. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. When God does something for him, for you, give him glory. So take a piece of paper. Don't wait for another time. Now, before the service is over, with two sentences only, write what God has done for you and drop your testimony here on the altar before we leave. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I want to release a blessing over your life. Father, thank you so much for your word works and it has worked mightily in our lives. I speak a blessing over everyone that has received this word. Oh God, let everyone under the anointing of my voice, may they receive the spirit of prayer. May they receive an excellent spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. May their faithfulness be known unto all men. Let these virtues lift up people here to levels that they have never even imagined. I give you glory. And Lord, if there be anyone under the anointing of my voice who is living in sin, not born again, they are on their way to hell, but today they have heard your word and they are under the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Draw them, Holy Spirit, to Jesus, I pray. And Lord, show mercy and forgive them. And begin their life afresh to the glory of your great name. As we bow our heads, you may be here. You are not born again. You say, servant of God, pray for me. I need to be changed by the power of Jesus. I want to make him my Lord and my Savior. I want to be forgiven. Shoot up that end high above your head. And you're going to be forgiven today. Your name will be written in the book of life. If you raise it, raise it above your head. And I will pray with you. The greatest miracle will happen to you right now. Anyone? Anyone this morning? If you raise it, raise it above your head. Raise it above your head. And I will pray with you. In the name of Jesus, the greatest miracle. I see your hand back there. God bless you. Keep the hand up. Keep the hand up. Yes, I am waiting. Is there anyone else? You are hearing the voice of God saying today, today, he wants to change your story. Shoot up that hand. Do it now. It's my final call. If your hand is down and you know if something happened to you right now and you died, you're not 100% sure you would be in heaven with Jesus. Join with those that are raising up their hands. I see somebody else with their hand up there. God bless you. God bless you. Anyone else? If you raise it, don't put it down. Keep it up above your head. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you're raising up your hand from wherever you are, Get out of your seat and come all the way to the front. We're going to pray with you. We're going to pray with you. This is the most important prayer. This is the most important prayer. God does not hear the prayer of a sinner. But when a sinner prays to receive mercy, God hears that prayer. They are coming they are coming. 
Salvation belongs to our God who sees upon the throne and unto the Lamb and unto the Lamb. Come and pray. Come and pray with them. Wisdom and thanks. Towards these people, lift up your hands. You are forgiven. Now you belong to Jesus. Your story has changed forever. Lord, we bless these that have come to you this morning. You say, Those who will come to you, none will you cast out. Receive them into your kingdom, give them eternal life. From this day, O oh God, give them to hate what is evil and to love what is good. May they cherish your word. May, may they join with those that are seeking you and become seekers of God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Welcome to the kingdom of God. We love you. We want to take good care of you. We, you have become our, our brothers and you are our sister. Amen. And this is now your family. Amen. Amen. Yes. And, and we will take good, good care of you. These people standing behind you are going to go with you. And they're going to talk to you and tell you what you need to do now that you gave your heart to the Lord. Just go with them. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of God. It is time to give our tithes and our offerings unto the Lord. I thought somebody would rejoice. I was teaching in Grace Hour two, two weeks ago. And I asked people, how many people believe? Luke chapter 6 verse 38 is true. Everybody raised their hand. You know what it says? It says, give and it shall be given back to you. So I asked them again. I said, think about what I'm asking. I said, because if you believed that when you give it is coming back, you wouldn't be giving what you are giving. It's coming back in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing. So we must believe the word of God. That word is true. It is coming back. Say, my offering is coming back. So if you need an envelope for your tithe, the ushers will give you an envelope if you are giving from your phone. The ushers will give you a white envelope. This white envelope is for your, is for your offering if you are giving from your phone. You write your name and you write the details there. Go, go into the, uh, into the uh, phone and do what you need to do. The information is up on the screen. And everyone uh, will need to 
take one of these envelopes. This is to help us with our mission. To help us take the gospel to the nations of the world. This is our mission envelope. So you, you pick one of them and do what you need to do. And the Lord is going to bless you. I'll ask Pastor Catherine to pray for the offering. Hallelujah. Lift it up before the Lord. Father, we thank you. We bless you for speaking to us by your word. Father, we pray as we honor you this afternoon. That, Lord, you will receive our tithes and our offerings and our free will giving before you. That, Father, none of us will mock you in our giving. But, Father, we will truly give unto you. Let a blessing, let a harvest come to each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The ashes will come and they will serve us. If you are bringing your tithe, you come and lay it on the altar and your mission, uh, your mission uh, offering, the world outreach offering, you come and lay it on the altar and the Lord Jesus is going uh, to bless us. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Master. I want to ask Our Excellency to come and greet the church. Um, come on, let's receive her. Let's receive her nicely. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just want to thank you, our Father of Faith. I was just telling him this morning that when I was young, and now I'm old, he is still serving the Lord faithfully, courageously, truthfully. And this is a sign of a mature church, the mature body of Christ that has an inheritance. And so as I stand here and listen to his preaching on faith, that faith, with faith, you have to fight. Whatever you get from the kingdom of God, you don't get it fairly. For the kingdom of God suffereth violence, and the violent take it by. I have come to encourage the Pentecostal and evangelicals that are so scared. What are you scared about? 
you must listen to the word of God and practice it. Imitate your Christ. You must pick the word in and out of season. You must stand by what God called you. We have a calling. And Paul says in Ephesians 4, from verse 1, that he's a prisoner of Christ. You are a prisoner, and you cannot come out of that prison because we went there by choice. He called us, we went there. And he loved us first, and we are loving him. So to fast and to pray, Pentecostals, Evangelicals, you fast and pray. Why do they have a problem with the Pentecostals and Evangelicals fasting and praying? When other denominations, they pray every day. Distinguish yourself. Separate yourself. Be righteous. And let God count you faithful. Do not fear man. For what can man do to you? There is only one thing that can happen. You die. And that means you'll be present with the Lord. You will not be absent in the body. So to us, to live is Christ and to die is? So we must obey the commandment of God. In the place of prayer, please don't come out. I'm an intercessor, so I know. Don't come out of your place of intercession. With all manner of prayers, pray. And never stop praying. That is what I needed to say. God bless you. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. And we blessed in Kenya to have godly leaders, to have women of faith, women of prayer, sitting in high places, and they are not ashamed. They are not ashamed of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We will kick every devil out of this country. Yes, we will not be afraid. We will not be intimidated. We will stand tall and let the devil know that Jesus is Lord over Kenya. He is Lord over Kenya. And he is Lord over Africa. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, we are coming to the close of the service. Can you stand up on your feet wherever you are? Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Lift up your hands to heaven. Lift up your hands to heaven. I cover everyone with the precious blood of Jesus. I speak God's protection over your life. And the angel of the Lord that watches over this house, watch you are going out and you are coming in. Lord, we are entering into our week of prayer and fasting. Lord, may you be with us. And as we gather here every day, in the morning and in the evening, let your presence be here. Lord, let the weakest among us be like David, for surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Have a blessed day. We are gathering again in the evening. Put your hands together and celebrate the Lord as we go.
Thank you.